Hello, I'm Matt, and this Loxley Quality Time tutorial is to help you with this painting, Classic Cottage from the Cantiso Collection. If you haven't already watched our Techniques tutorial videos, please have a look at them before starting your project. They give you some valuable information about painting with the quality time range and help you get the most out of your quality time. This video contains specific information about your chosen painting, but we assume that you are already familiar with the general techniques covered in our tutorial videos. Classic Cottage features the family home of Anne Hathaway in Shottery, Warwickshire, where she lived until she married a young poet, playwright and actor from nearby Stratford-upon-Avon, William Shakespeare. This delightful thatched Tudor farmhouse contains period furniture and is surrounded by classic English gardens, an orchard and arboretum, with examples of all the trees mentioned in Shakespeare's plays. Despite coming from a middle class family, surprisingly few records of Anne's life and character exist. I have added a peacock to this picture, as they are often seen in traditional English gardens. Right, so I'm going to start stage one, and I'm going to start with the sky and there is a video on painting skies which gives you more information. I've mixed this quite a pale blue using mainly white with only approximately 10% of the lighter blue in this pack. Keep loading my brush so that I don't leave lines. If your brush runs dry you end up with lines in your paint and this is quite a smooth sky so I'm trying to get as few lines as possible and I'm using a larger brush with horizontal brush strokes so working my way across the sky like this. It's a good idea working down the canvas because then your hands not going in the paint. Around the building I'm being very careful not to go onto the actual cottage or the chimney and the roof here. You can cut down using downward brush strokes but then if you just finish them off going horizontally so we're just brushing out all the brush marks it's nice and smooth and you'll notice on the picture it's not actually printed on the canvas there is just a couple of very pale clouds which I'm going to leave out here just go around them because the blue is more darker color than the white so it's harder to put the clouds in if you paint the dark blue over it and then down towards the cottage here I'm just adding a little bit more white as the towards the horizon it always gets lighter so to remember that the horizon always runs right down even below where you can see it so it goes down behind the trees and behind the building I'm just a bit paler here again and you'll notice that the canvas has got a clean edge so you can actually paint around the edge of the canvas which looks a bit more finished off it's a good idea to do it while you have got the color mix so you're not having to go back in later I'm just going to use brush strokes this way just to keep the paint off the chimney and then just finish them that way like that never be afraid to mix the colours too pale. They always mix a bit darker than you would imagine. You can always darken up on stage two. Just leaving an area here for this cloud. It's important when you're doing a sky not to break off until you've finished. I'm just adding a bit of white in here for this cloud. While you've got the colour mix and before the paint's dried if you just keep going so that you don't end up with a patchy sky. That's your sky done. I'm now going to paint this tree to the left of the cottage and I've mixed up a very pale green using mainly yellow and there's some bits of the tree that go behind the cottage and then some bits that come over it. I'm not putting it on too thick, just nice gentle brush strokes and I want to be able to see through where the leaves are like this. Keep loading your brush. I'm using my small brush because some of these leaves are a bit more delicate. There is a technique video on painting trees and foliage and I'm going round these where the apples are, not painting them green. You can leave a bit of variation in the colour by the depth, the amount of paint you put on. The more you brush it out, the paler it'll be, and the less you brush it out, the darker it is, like here. And again, you can go around the edge of the canvas while I've got this mix of colour. You can turn the canvas on its side if it makes it easier for doing the edge. Just left it like this for the video. I'm just leaving a bit of texture in there and then working down. Try and work out where the paint is to be applied before you actually put it on. It's the green bit done. And then I'm now going to paint pure yellow where the apples are. Put it on quite thick so that it gives a bit of texture. And there's my apple tree. I'm now painting the trees at the back of the cottage. I'm retaining the individuality of the trees. 
so that they stand out as individual trees. For this particular lighter coloured tree, I've mixed a very pale green using mainly white with a very small amount of green. And I'm going upwards in the direction that the tree grows, following nature's line of branches growing upwards. I'm going around this sky area here so that the green doesn't go on there, so you can see the sky through that. Now we're going to move over to these other trees I'm using the bigger brush. You don't have to be as exact with these trees, it's more just a suggestion of different colours. I'm using this lighter mix first. And again I'm using vertical brush strokes because that's the direction that the trees grow in. For this particular tree here, this lighter tree, I'm using an even paler green, just sticking to the where the, this particular tree is. So it's retained a tree shape. Don't want it all to look just like one big giant hedge. And then they're working in some darker green. Some of these brush strokes are going in different directions, just like the leaves for the foliage. You can almost mix the paint on the actual canvas sometimes. Every tree is unique and every painting is unique. So don't worry too much about the colour mix if it doesn't come up exactly as you want it. You can also change the shade of the green a little bit later in stage two can lighten some of these or darken some of them, these shades. Actually provides a very interesting backdrop for the cottage. It's fine just to have small brush strokes in this paint because it just brings looks like the foliage. Doesn't matter whether you do your dark green or your lighter greens first. But while you've got going with the colour, it's a good idea to keep going with that shade of green. You can go any over any of these greens just to add a bit or take a bit away. Just like playing with the colour till you're satisfied. At this stage it'll look patchy but that's fine. Now we've even put some neat yellow on and just lighten up some of these areas. Gently tickling the canvas with this paint. Get rid of any white bits with the yellow. So that's the trees at stage one. And what I've got is the some of the shapes of the trees, different dark and light areas. So I can come in at stage two and add more to this. I'm just going to put in some of the branches and I'm using the dark brown and the small paintbrush, just the very tip of the brush loaded with paint. Very fine branches. Hold the brush so that it's hardly touching the canvas. You can see more of the trees, the trunks, the branches here where there's less leaves. And then I'm just going to do a, a suggestion of some branches in some of these trees. They're again really fine lines. And I'm onto this hedge and again I'm going to retain the shape of this hedge. So I've got this line running along here, which I'm going to just paint up to. This is like the side of the hedge and then I want it to be a different shade of green to the top. Not overloading the brush, don't want it too dark. Particularly around the peacock here, I'm going not much paint on my brush at all. So that it's nice and pale around the peacock's head and body. But I don't want to lose the detail of that. Again, brushing this out before it dries so that it doesn't end up too dark. And again, you can lighten areas using yellow. So if I wanted it a bit lighter around the peacock here, I could just add in a bit of yellow. It just lightens off that area there. Then for the top of the hedge, I'm going to use a paler green by adding more yellow. So it'll give this bush dimension. You can see the flat top and then you've got the edges here. You can choose whether to do the peacock's tail going behind the grass or as you'll see in a later picture, I've done one that's where you can see the whole tail. You can choose between having tail showing or disappearing behind the vegetation here. It's a very busy garden, these typical English country garden. Lots of different plants and different shaped leaves which you can pick out with the brush strokes. I'm actually going to leave in some of these brush strokes, apply the paint a bit more thickly so you can actually get the texture. By using the small brush you get the brush strokes showing through, which is what you want for this plants and leaves and things. On this bush I'm going to paint round these flowers which come back to, I'm just leaving a few white bits. And again I'm retaining the individuality of the plants here, sort of following these lines. And for this one here you'll notice that it's mainly yellow flowers if you look at your photo with the stalky branches. So I'll put in some of the stalks now while I've got the green. Just the suggestion of the plants growing up. And just with the pure yellow, putting in some of these flowers here. It can be quite liberal with the yellow colour because the green and any other colours will go over it quite easily. So just sort of blocking in these flower areas. Referring to my photograph of sort of yellowy whitey flowers here. And then over here I'm just going to make it more interesting. I'm going to do some like round leaves. It doesn't matter with the canvas showing through here because then when this paint's dry I can go back in with a lighter colour. I've just marked out where my leaves are going to be there. It's looking like a busy, well-stocked garden. 
while this is drying, I'm just going to do some of these red flowers in this area here. You can either use just pure red or you can add a little bit of white to make them like a pinky color. So I'm just gonna put these flowers in here randomly. And I've got the bits I've left white and then you can do it where there's green as well. Build them up at stage two. This is just all part of stage one. On the photo, there's a few lilac flowers around here. So I'm just gonna use blue, keep it simple, using the paler blue. I'm actually putting the paint on quite thick, just in very small specks. So I'm now doing the um, natural stone of the stone slabs and the, there's a bit of stone at the bottom of the wall here. These here, this is all brick and there's some more stone area here. And it's a very pale mix of mostly white with a little bit of dark brown to give this gray color. And you'll see, I can see the outlines quite clearly through the paint so that I can pick up these individual stones at stage two. Careful not to go onto the green. And you can go over the peacock's feet because we'll be painting those in later. And then you've got some stone area here and, and then there's some more stone area just down here. All right, so I've now got my big brush and I'm doing the roof and I'm doing some brush strokes across just for the top, cutting up to the skyline. Try not to get it on the trees. And on the, um, for the most part of this, I'm doing the brush strokes the same angle as the roof. And I've mixed up this color, mainly white with a bit of yellow and light brown. And it's not, I've not mixed it thoroughly because I want the, um, some of the colors to show through. So it's, if it's a bit streaky, it looks like the natural straw, you see the white bits here. And if you leave some brush strokes as well, it looks more effective. So you can see some brown streaks in here. Brilliant, that's how I want it. And then for this little patch here, it's, quite yellow. It's obviously a newer bit of flatch. We'll see where they've repaired the roof or something. So I'm just putting that in a bit paler, a bit yellow there. And then this bit of the roof. Took a similar colour to the rest of the roof, so I've just made it a bit darker with the brown there. Okay, so I'm now on with the, the second roof, using similar brush strokes down at the same angle as the roof. Just a darker colour because it's an older thatch. Okay, so now I'm going to do stage one of the peacock and I'm using the small brush and using the very tip of it and it's the most delicate part of the picture here probably. So I'm using the lighter blue, painting the front part of the bird going around the wing. And this will look quite patchy but it's okay because we'll do another layer of this paint. So the head and beak, I'm painting over the eye because I'm able to guess where that is and the little crown. And then now for the tail, I'm going to mix blue and green, follow the brush strokes and the direction of the tail. So I'm now going to do the legs and feet of this very fine brush strokes and then just the top of the legs with the blue. That's the peacock up to stage one. So I'm now doing the walls of the cottage with this white and yellow mix. It gives this cream colour. I'm painting just in between the timbers and around any vegetation. Paint right up to the roof line. I'm now doing the timbers and on this elevation they're darker so I'm just using just a dark brown and a small brush you can just keep to the areas of these thin timbers. We'll have another layer of paint at stage two so they'll be a bit patchy these. This elevation is paler so we're using white mixed with the dark brown. You can use different shades of this by adding more white. I'm now going to paint stage one of this window and I've mixed a palish grey using white and dark brown, keeping the individuality of these windows and then for the edge of the window just a darker shade or a different shade. It can be lighter or darker as long as it stands out. You can vary the colour a little bit in the window. So do some darker patches which makes it more interesting. I'm going to do some of the bricks and you can choose whether to um, just do a few or you know it's up to you how many bricks you do, how much detail. If you do them overlapping they look more realistic and I've mixed up this red colour using red and yellow just going over the lightning conductor. So I can put that back in later and you can just ignore the outline and just put the bricks in just overlapping them like this. Just use the outline as a guide. You've got the individual shapes of the bricks using the small brush and you can vary the colour, make it slightly darker by adding more red or slightly lighter by adding more yellow. You'll notice that they run this way and then back at a slight angle for the return of the chimney. This is stage one of the painting completed. So the whole canvas is painted and I've finished the bricks off on the chimney and you'll notice the angle changes. So you've got the bricks running this way for the chimney and then here they're just level and then here they're almost the other way. And I've done these two chimney stacks as well. And then the timbers, I've painted in all these timbers and I've used the um, dark brown just to put in some of the detail on the roof line here so that's not lost. 
Okay, so I'm now doing stage two of the sky and I've mixed this blue using mostly white but slightly more blue than the first mix and we're using horizontal brush strokes again. Brush out the lines in the paint. Remember to keep your brush loaded and I'm working around these little cloud areas. So you've got a nice smooth sky. Just adding a bit more white down towards the horizon again. Merging it in with the darker blue. Can add a bit more in just there. I don't want to lose my branches. A bit paler down here. And then with the white, just working into these cloudy areas. Can put a bit of texture in with the brush strokes onto the clouds. And they don't, the brush strokes don't need to be horizontal. I'm just working on stage two of the apple tree here and I'm using a darker green and the small brush and I'm using the brush strokes in different angles to um, signify the different the leaves, the shapes of the leaves. That's the further away bit and then I'm, here I'm using plenty of paint and individual brush strokes so you can get the actual shape and at the edge do nice clear ones going around the apples so that the um, yellow stands out still. Some of these leaves are a tiny bit of brown with the green and others I'm just using the green as it is. By using different shades of green it makes it more interesting, more variety in the leaves. Remember to keep loading your brush. Again we're painting around the apples. Well that green's drying, I'm going to go back to the apples and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of red on each apple. Just working these around with the yellow so that the red blends in a bit and it looks like the real apple shapes then. You can see the texture on them. Just gonna, with a yellowy green, fill in between some of these leaves. Once they've dried, we can then go back in a bit. You can go any, over any of these leaves to make them bolder with the green again, if you want them to really stand out. Okay, so I'm doing these trees this side, and I'm using the small brush and little brush strokes to keep the individuality of the trees. A bit darker in here. And you can leave the brush strokes in, so it looks like the foliage. You don't need to smooth it out. And now I'm going to work across this area using again different shades of green. So it's um, lighter colours with more yellow and the darker with less yellow in the green. Using small brush strokes so that you can get a feel for the leaves, like building up the layers. Keep the light in the dark areas. Because the paint's transparent you actually see the green underneath showing through which creates these different shades. Some places you can put the paint on quite thick as well so that you get the texture. Now going on to this hedge, and you remember in stage one we kept the shape of the hedge, which we're going to do the same. So we're working on this line here, and then I'm just going to bring some darker dots down here and keep that darker. And then you'll notice by not applying so much paint here, it's getting lighter. I've left some areas of stage one showing through here, just building that up as the corner there, and then working away across the top. So this hedge is suddenly becoming three-dimensional, and again round the bird, I, want, I don't want it too dark because I'll lose the, the bird won't stand out as much. So I'm just, just lightly brushing some of this darker green around here, very gentle brush strokes, and then you can come in a bit darker on the edges here. Because it's a closely cut hedge, it's more dabs than actual long brush strokes. If you do happen to go too dark on any of this vegetation, you can always lighten it up with a bit of yellow. I'm gonna keep the top lighter, so I'm not applying too much paint, just tickling the surface with very little paint, almost a dry brush. That's my bush done, and I can now work onto the archway here. And what I'm doing here is keeping individual leaves, so lots of individual brush strokes. And these leaves, if you do the brush strokes at different angles, so you've got like the shapes of the leaves and the ones at the edge, if you do them nice and clear, you can go over again any of these leaves if you want them to sort of stand out. You can do different size leaves as well, just some very little dots, just make it all more interesting. And I do some of the vegetation on stage two in this busy garden here, and I'm just doing random leaf shapes and stalks and to make it look interesting. You can put texture in so if you apply the paint thickly you can get some interesting brush effects. On here as well I'm going to revisit some of the flowers making the yellow brighter and more bolder and the red. So just building these little flowers up. So I'm now doing stage two on the path and what I'm going to do is pick out some of the individual stones. I've mixed up a darker grey. I'm not painting over the whole area, I'm just selectively painting stone shapes. And then I'm going to paint some of the slabs, just the shape, but not the, I'm not painting the whole area, just random slabs, these stone slabs. 
I'm brushing just a little bit of white onto these wall areas just to give them more interest. Being careful working my way around so not going on the beams. You don't have to cover the whole area, it just makes it look more interesting. So I'm now doing stage two of the thatched roof on the left here. I'm not going to paint the whole area, but I'm just selectively painting little bits of white. Some of it I'm leaving in and others I'm brushing out. It's got this white brush effect, but not overloading the area. Just put it in and then brush it out evenly. Just working your way across the roof. The same angle as before, so it's following the angle of the roof. Right, now I've finished brushing the white in, I'm just going to brush a little bit of yellow in. I'm doing the same as I did with the white. So it's just like an influence of yellow. So your brush is almost dry and you're just spreading out this yellow. If any of these areas of yellow end up too strong, you can go back in with the white, sort of almost like watering them down. So now I've finished my yellow and white, I'm just doing very selective, very thin streaks of brown, just with the very tip of the brush. I'm not spreading these out like I did with the yellow and the white, but just leaving them in. You can pick up some of the contours on the on the roof, so like the curves and the edges and things, it's like hair line strands. And then with, with this brown, I'm going to also put in some of the detail that I'm losing at the top here. So where it's actually stitched, you can also use it to just define the edges as well. The very fine line if you want to make the edge of the roof stand out a bit. So I'm now working on the right hand roof and I'm just brushing in a bit of white like I did on the other roof. Put a bit of paint on and then brush it out. Over here there's two white patches where if you look at your photo you'll see two quite distinct areas of white. So I'm not brushing those out, I'm just going to leave them in. Now with the brown I'm going to put some selective streaks in and put some of the detail back in the top here. Put in selective brush strokes. A few on this edge here where the curve comes down and I'm just gonna mark out this one as well. Got the shape of that, the shape of the roof. And then you will notice from your photo, there's um, some green on the roof, obviously where some moss or something has been growing. I'm just putting just pure green, just little dabs, obviously where it's damp this moss has formed. And then with a dry brush with no paint on, I'm just spreading some of the green out just so it's got a green tinge to this roof. I'm just going to do stage two on the peacock. I'm just going to carefully, with the small brush, go over the blue on the head. And you'll see this blue is coming up much nicer now on the stage two. I'm going to strengthen the feet with a bit of blue and white. The toes stand out a bit better. With the dark blue on the wing, I'm just going to do these little dots right with the very tip of the brush. And on the tail, I'm going to do some green dots. If you notice on this particular painting, I've painted the, more of the whole tail in. And then on these green dots, I'm just going to do a blue bit in the middle, which is like, the, like an eye on the tail there. And then using the white, where the eye is, very tip of the hairs of the brush, I'm just going to put the eye back in. It needs to be just big enough, like so. While I've got the white, I'm just going to strengthen this white patch under the wing. Finally, with the dark brown, I'm just going to darken the beak and do a tiny little dot for its eye. Right now, so I'm doing stage two of the timbers here. On this elevation, it's just the dark brown. And you'll see they come up much darker and more striking. And then for the beams on this elevation, they're almost white in places. So I'm just brushing on mostly white, just with a tiny bit of brown. And you can vary these, like here, the beam's darker and then Bit lighter here just so it's more interesting so you can almost see the grain in the timber it's important to with the brush strokes to follow the the grain as well in the timber so that you these brush marks look like the actual timber with a dark brown you can go in and add just little details so it looks like knots and things in the timber just to give it character for stage two of the window now i'm just doing very fine lines diagonal lines with the tip of the brush, put in some of the frame. It's up to you how much detail you actually put in. So I'm now going to do um, stage two on the brick chimney. And what you'll notice from your photo is that the actual mortar between the bricks is not particularly white. So I want to get rid of some of this whitish area. So I'm brushing over the bricks with a almost yellow, just a tiny bit of red. So I'm not putting too much paint on. My brush is almost dry just with this yellow, really spreading it out so that the bricks show through. But you'll notice from your picture that at the, towards the top, it looks like it's been repointed and the cement is, is quite white. So I'm not going to put the yellow up at the top of the chimney. And then if I stop, it looks like it's been newly pointed at the top. 
just like the photo. I'm just doing the same with these chimneys so they don't stand out. Right, that's stage two of my painting finished. We're now going to go on to stage three, shadows. There is a technique video on painting shadows, which gives you more information on this. I've mixed water with the shadow paint because it's a soft shadow here. And now I'm going to use the paint without the water, the shadow mix, just for some of these darker shadows. So I've done one, one coat of paint and because it's quite a dark shadow, I'll come back over this when it's dried with a, the same shadow paint just to make a darker shadow. It's quite big overhangs on these thatch roofs. You can use the smaller brush if you feel more comfortable. I'm going to go back over some of these shadows, make them a bit darker. So I'm using the same brush strokes, but just making the shadows more intense. Just very small areas marked on your instruction guide. This is, this is just the paint with no water added. Now adding shadows up in these trees here. You can just do this selectively. You can do some quite small dots as well. Just doing very small specks with the tip of the brush. Here, some more shadows. Under the peacock, I'm going to do some watered, some with water, so it's a soft shadow. So that's stage three finished. All the shadows are done. And I'm now going on to stage four, the highlights. There is a video specifically on highlights, which gives more information on this technique. It's like the icing on the cake. It just sets it off, like where the sun's catching these little areas. I'm gonna add some to this glass as well. These are so small, but it just makes such a difference. Just on the vegetation here. These um, highlights that I'm adding here, they're, they're shown on, in red on the colour guide of your instruction sheet. It shows you where to put them. You can also refer to your photograph, putting this on quite thickly, just with the tip of the brush. Windows always have some highlight because it's quite reflective. You have to keep loading your brush when you're doing highlights. There's a few on this archway. You can go back over the, any of these highlights if they're not bold enough. Right, that's stage four finished and the picture done. I've enjoyed this painting. See what you can do with your quality time. Goodbye.